That's right, Nancy. It's a very rapidly moving story. But what I can tell you is that U.S. Secretary of State Juan Pompeo is expected to arrive in Riyadh just a couple of hours in, from now, just in time for breakfast. He's going to be meeting with his Saudi counterparts here. There's going to be um, more announcements throughout the day, a lot of meetings throughout the day before he then gets on a plane tomorrow and heads to Turkey as well. Now, of course, what this has meant for the Saudi, uh, basically for the markets here and certainly for the conversations that I've been having with folks on the ground, it's interesting to know that as we saw the Saudi market really moving lower by three and a half percent on Sunday, yesterday we saw the market closing up about four percent. And I think that really does speak to the fact that folks here on the ground were really anticipating some move from the government, some announcements from the government. And they felt that finally the fact that the government was talking was a very, very good thing uh, for the market. So a lot of conversations here around what is going to happen next, about how this all plays out, frankly, and how this is going to impact U.S.-Saudi relations going forward. Yes, Hadley, it's an interesting one because we're there looking at the rebound in the Tadwal. It wasn't just the Saudi assets as well. We've been keeping an eye on SoftBank shares here on the Asian session because there was that big dip in SoftBank, largely due to concerns over their investment ties with Saudi Arabia and especially for that vision fund. Interesting, we are seeing a little bit of a move to the upside for SoftBank shares, as you can see there, just about 3% today. But so much still needs to be uncovered here. We're waiting to get more details on this matter. As you say, the visit from Secretary Pompeo will be crucial. And when it comes to the broader business response as well, it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. I know our U.S. colleagues will be speaking to Larry Fink a bit later on today. He's just one who will be sitting out that meeting for the FII. That's something you're watching closely too, isn't it, with the business community and their response? Oh, absolutely, Nancy. I mean, they were really just dropping like flies over the last 48 hours. You had the CEOs of MasterCard. You had, of course, uh, the CEO of Ford. You had Jamie Dimon. You had BlackRock, Blackstone. I mean, it was really interesting, I think, to note how many conversations were really had with the Saudis about pulling back here, about waiting on this conference. And of course, the folks that I've been talking to said, you know, maybe it's more of an ego thing that they really want to go ahead with this. It's such a delicate time for U.S.-Saudi relations. And of course, that does put an enormous amount of pressure and responsibility on the U.S. business community. But of course, uh, the Secretary of the Treasury, Mr. Mnuchin, has said he is still coming to Riyadh, that it's still on his agenda to attend this summit. So when you're getting such mixed messages, I think, uh, from the executive branch and from the Treasury, it's difficult to know from in the business community community, what's the appropriate action to take? And I think it really does, you know, speak to what we saw several years ago when those sanctions came on for Russia, what folks decided to do in terms of the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. And I think that you're seeing that in repeat over the next several yeah. days. Yes, Hadley, I guess the bigger concern is not just for the FII, what's been dubbed the Davos of the desert, because in reality, that's a one week event. I think the bigger story is what this means for the 2030 vision going forward and attempts to really bring in Western investors on that front. Absolutely, Nancy. You know, it's an incredibly uh, difficult time, I'm sure, for the folks that were behind that economic vision, certainly mm -hmm. from the crown prince, but certainly for the folks that have been working so diligently to move this country forward. That was really uh, a, a major push to catapult this country into the 21st century. I mean, this didn't just have to do with women driving, as you say. It had to do with really turning this economy around. I was taking a look back at some of the photos from the last several years of, of covering this country and covering this transformation in terms of that economic vision. And, you know, remembering sitting in that room with only a handful of other Western journalists, I think there were only three women in that room, actually, and when they decided to announce the Vision 2030, and that was the Crown Prince's first press conference, essentially going up there and, you know, speculating how much Aramco could be worth in an IPO, and all of the excitement surrounding, you know, the first moves uh, that people had seen from this country in, in decades in terms of trying to catapult them forward into the 21st century. There was so much excitement, and I think certainly now today people are taking a step back, uh, whether they're international investors you know, looking to get involved in the market or whether they're sitting here on the ground in Riyadh and really trying to read the tea leaves as to what's going to happen next. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.